but basically has to do with um, the disconnect between your heart and your brain. Kind of like sometimes your heart tells you one thing and your brain does another or the opposite. So this piece is kind of reflecting that and I kind of use materials that are opposites also. Like you think of clay as very fragile and this is cast iron. It's actually very tough and brittle and kind of... Um, I started it about two years ago. Um, the iron pieces are cast in my face first in plaster and then it's done in a wax and then after I cast the face in wax I have to cast it in iron which is um which I've done all myself not at a foundry some some things are done at a foundry but I've broken the metal up and had to pour it um, 100 pounds at a time so actually I've done all this and then these pieces are the more recent parts of it I did the faces first um, the brain and the heart are both made of stoneware um, they take about I don't know, maybe a month or two to actually construct it and let it dry. And then I fired these pieces at least five times to get a really ugly glaze, almost decomposing. And a lot of clay things are pretty, but I wanted these to look ugly and almost disgusting or there's something wrong or toxic about it. A couple years ago, I really started pulling away from things that I thought looked pretty and looking more towards imperfection and kind of just like you know, like I didn't want a nice, symmetrical, perfect form. I wanted something that was a little off and funky and weird and, you know, imperfect. And I guess that's how I feel and imperfect. And I don't like my art to reflect like perfection. And who's interested in that anyways, you know? This is a needle. This is actually, I also did my first um, metal and clay together. Um, this one was more about kind of um, being half Irish and half Seminole. I get a lot of like, you know, I guess people telling me what what they think I am, how they define me. So this is kind of a toxic, negative energies that come in and out. So it's kind of like a repetition of, people always try to define me. So through art, I can redefine what people think. Uh, this piece is about, um, uh, well, lost dreams, things that have fallen apart that once were. Um, I always work with uh, figurative uh, works that have animal heads on them. Um, the figures uh, represent people in my life, and um, they're always masked in these animal heads to represent their personalities. Um, and they're always declothed to represent the uh, vulnerability that they have uh, with people. So it's kind of uh, this raw emotion that's being expressed. And this one actually reflects my is joint with time. I, I, I call this one time displacement disorder. As you can see, all, all the different clocks are running different ways, but one's actually keeping real time. And it, it's a reflection of my inability to stay on proper time. I lose time. I'm, things are going fast, too slow. I don't know what day it is. I don't sleep the right way. Well, it's dealing with the fears and the obsessions we have with technology. So, I'm trying to look at where our technology is leading us as a society and as a species and, and it, I'm, I'm hoping to obtain some sort of emotional response with that that someone will talk, you know, take the time to stop and think we're all so plugged in, we're all connected but at the same time there's such a disjoint in between just talking to someone online and actually knowing someone in person. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, the Homeless Matthew series was an idea, sort of a social commentary on the state of the United States right now, the state of art sales, and also a little poke at uh, art history and at uh, religious history. Uh, Matthew was the patron saint of tax collectors, bankers, and other jobs involving money, and in the United States right now, most of them are homeless as of this point. So um, this was our little joke almost to uh, how that's going. So this work is a different series of work that I do. Um, it's a little more serious, talking about uh, how violence fits in our culture, uh, and really kind of like what we do, um, you know, how we deal with deal with uh, some violent things, violent acts, and um, where I'm going with this is this is kind of the first step in this series and I really want to start pushing this into a direction of dealing with you know violence and education. Uh, my name is Philip Hoybeck. I'm originally from Germany. This particular piece is called Abyss and uh, it is like most of my pieces it's in half abstract uh, half realistic style. It's an abstract piece that starts out as an all abstract piece and then I, um, as I go along, I add more and more realistic objects into it. Um, and it's very much about the way the paint wants to flow. I just allow it to flow. That's how the basic setup of the pieces happen. And later I go in and look at what I could add and what kind of vibe I get from the piece. Uh, kind of to force the viewer to look at animals in a different way. Um, animals used to be, you know, cultures around the world's deities, and uh, that's just kind of been replaced with sort of a neglect or outright exploitation. Um, so I just kind of change their own natural decoration or give them these kind of silly um, and majestic uh, luchador masks. and. Um, just to kind of put the animal in a different light for, for people to change the way they think about it. This is amazing. We've gotten so much amazing responses from this. I and mean, we've actually been invited to a gallery in New York, or a fair in New York, from this event. So that's hopefully what we'll be doing next. So. Right. Be true to your perspective and be honest. And, um, you know, just don't be afraid of material and everything. Go for it, you know. I don't know what to say. <laughs>